Hi guys, I'm Matt and welcome to Tasty's Hack or Hassle. On this show, Tasty producers attempt to make their favorite dishes using a bunch of hacks as collected by our friend Annie. I love burgers, so I'm very curious to see how these hacks are going to change the overall outcome and the flavor of our burgers. This is your classic American cheeseburger. To me, it is the perfect food. Super simple, but always extremely satisfying. But you know what? I'm curious to see how our hacks will reshape how I make burgers. Let's get started on making our patty. Now, the first hack Annie gave me is to use multiple types of meat in your burger rather than just one. I'm using a blend of sirloin, chuck, and short rib, and this is just gonna add a lot of nice flavor. It's gonna allow me to sort of dial in exactly what I want it to taste, if I want it more beefy, if I want it more fatty. Whatever blend you want, you can dial it into however you want it to taste. The next hack is to actually add baking soda to the meat mixture. This is supposed to help it brown. It's supposed to kind of kickstart that that Maillard reaction. I don't usually have an issue with my burgers browning, so I'm curious to see if this makes them brown on steroids or if it's just gonna look kind of the same. And it's really important with burgers to not over mix. You don't wanna break down all the fat. You don't wanna make them too dense either. This next hack is wetting your hands with cold water to prevent the patties from sticking so you can shape the ultimate patty. As long as you're not working with the beef for too long, it shouldn't really stick to your hands. I think it starts to stick when it kind of melts and warms up. I I think this is easy to get around, but we'll see. So this looks nice to me. I don't want to work with it too much. I don't want to overwork my beef, but I have to say there's like nothing stuck to my hands right now. Look at that. Before I set this down, there's one more little hack that I want to try. So it's basically the thumb technique. I'm just going to take my thumb and make a little divot in the middle. And the idea is that when the burger is cooking, it's going to start to get like tight. It's going to start to form a ball almost. This is going to help it remain nice and flat and keep its shape a lot more. This next hack actually involves the lid of a jar of peanut butter. So the idea is that you can use the lid to help shape your patties. What I am going to thumbs down is using the peanut butter jar lid itself. Kind of small. This would work really, really well if, say, I was making a slider, but for a burger, it's a little bit petite. So I'm actually going to set this aside, and I'm gonna introduce my own hack. So this is something I learned at a restaurant I was working at years and years ago. These are deli containers. You'll get them a lot with takeout. So the idea is that I'm going to use these two containers to shape my patty. And I'm just going to press it in there a little bit. I don't wanna like force it in too much. And then I'm just going to take the second lid, press it down gently. I don't wanna like squish my beef too much. And there you go. I'm going to make a little divot in the top. So my burger kind of bows out. And here are the two patties. I really, really like the deli container one. It looks very uniform. The edge is super exact. The hand shaped one also looks great. It looks very thick. So I think both of these are gonna turn out pretty okay and I'm excited to see how they cook up. The next hack is to actually pop these patties in the fridge or freezer for about 20 to 30 minutes just to kind of cool them. I think the idea is that the cold is gonna help them hold their shape a lot more while they're cooking. If they're too warm and if they're too like melted, they're just gonna fall apart. But I'm very curious to see what the results are gonna be. My burger patties have been chilling in the fridge for about 20 to 30 minutes. Chilling it in the fridge has made it nice and firm. It's holding its shape together really, really nicely. It is time to start cooking our patties. I have a cast iron pan here just heating up. You can use nonstick, you can use whatever pans you have, you can use a grill, but I'm going with cast iron. I love cast iron. It retains heat really well. This next hack involves adding mustard to our patties. A lot of places actually do grilled mustard on their burgers just to add a little bit more flavor, to zhuzh it a little bit. Woo, she's sizzling. I can really smell the mustard. It's like in the air. It smells so good. I'm very skeptical of this hack. The idea is that you take chips of ice and you place them in the little divots you made on the top of the burger. I feel like if you don't overcook them, they'll stay moist regardless of whether or not there's ice, but let's see what happens. The burgers have already been in the pan for a few minutes. I don't know if having the cold burger patty with the cold ice, it doesn't seem to really be working. It's not melting all that quickly. And now it is time to flip my burgers. I don't know if I love the way the mustard looks actually. Maybe I applied it too thick. Maybe it's supposed to be a super thin layer. This next hack, don't press your burgers, don't flip them around too much, don't play with them. I think that's pretty much a best practice when you're cooking in general. You want that Maillard reaction to really do its magic and to make things nice and crispy and caramelized. One of the ways I like to gauge the doneness of my burgers is I check on the sides to see how far up the pink extends. If I'm noticing it's starting to cook through nicely and there's not as much pink visible, I can usually assume that it's like the right doneness on the inside. 
And so that's kind of my metric for how I know when my burgers are done. The next and sort of final cooking hack is putting the cheese on while it's still in the pan so the residual heat from the pan helps it melt faster rather than throwing it on at the end and hoping it melts all the way on top. I prefer American. I know some people are sticklers. Oh, it's technically not real cheese. It melts like nothing else. But you can use any cheese that you want. And there we have it. The cheese has melted nicely over the top. It's kind of enrobed my burger a bit. At this stage in the game, I can see a couple of my hacks and how they've had an impact on everything. They've retained their nice flat burger profile. And I think a lot of that is due to that little divot that we put in the inside so it didn't sort of curl up on itself. So again, another great hack that's worked really, really well for these burgers. Earlier, we added baking soda to help the browning of the burgers. So I just want to take a look at the bottom here. Oh, wow. It looks like the baking soda worked, but how much more did it work? We'll check in on that later. These burgers apparently need to rest for about 10 minutes just to let the juices redistribute. I think this is gonna work because the best practice with all meat is to let it rest for a few minutes afterwards. And so these babies are just gonna chill for a bit and then we'll check them out. Now the bun is the most underrated and one of the most important parts of a burger, so we have to get this right. I have in front of me a pretzel bun. You can use whatever bun you want for this. What's important is that you have a whole bun. So we are going to take our bun and just slice through it. And before we go all the way through, we're gonna stop. So basically, we have a little hinge on the end here. And this is to A, hold our bun together. It's also gonna create an edge where not all of our toppings are going to spill out. At least I think that's the point of it. Shake Shack does this on their burgers, so I'm very curious to see how it works here. Now, every great burger has a toasted bun. To me, that's a fact. We're going to be trying to cook our buns in the leftover fat and juices that are in the pan. I'm just gonna take a little paper towel here and just use it to dab up a lot of that excess fat. It's nice and heated up. I'm just gonna take my bun, plop her in there. And before I finish, I just wanna turn it around. I wanna make sure that I get every little bit coated with that beef fat, and I'm just gonna let this sit. You can even see it sizzling just along the outside there. All right, and time for the grand reveal. I don't know about you, that looks pretty nice to me. Cooking in your leftover beef fat, I think works beautifully. You don't have to. Obviously you can toast your buns in butter, oil, whatever you want, but we wanna use everything. And now that my bun is toasted and my patties are seared, it's time to assemble a burger. And now it is time for our final hack, and that is how to properly assemble a burger. Now, this particular hack involves putting our condiments on the bottom. Your bottom bun is less likely to get soggy. And the idea is that the mayo is super, super fatty, and so what that's gonna do is that's gonna create almost like a waterproof little layer on the bottom. And I'm just going to repeat with my ketchup. And now I'm just gonna take my lettuce. This lettuce creates a waterproof barrier so that our burger juices don't get down into the patty. Two nice slices of tomato. And now finally, star of our show, our burger patty. There we go, my top bun has now completely separated from the bottom bun. I think that really has to do with just the thickness of the burger. If you were making a thin smash burger, this would work a lot better, but because my burger is so thick, it doesn't really work, so I'm not gonna suggest it for this particular style. I, for one, am happy with how this looks, but the real test is gonna come when we compare it to our control burger. And here it is, my hack burger. Comparing them to each other, they certainly look different. I think the most noticeable and most visual difference I can see is my hacked burger is way darker and way browner than my regular burger, which I think is due to the baking soda that we put in before. Very surprising. I didn't expect it to be that different. We gotta start with the regular one. It's a good burger. It's nice, it's flavorful. I'm a little thrown by the untoasted bun. I don't know if that's a thing on a lot of burgers or just in this case, but like the lack of a crunch is really, really standing out to me. All right, my friend, let's see how you did. Hmm. This tastes very different. The patty on this, there's something about it that feels like a little bit like chewier almost and a little bit denser, but it's so much darker everywhere than this burger. Whereas like the simplicity of the unhacked burger, I almost wonder if the addition of the baking soda made it like too dark and made it change super radically. I do think that the burger with my toppings underneath has stayed together a lot better. I think when they're on top here, it kind of starts to run awry. At the end of the day, I think putting toppings on the bottom is 
kind of the way to go. I think it's a nice workaround. My grilled mustard, I can taste it, but it's very, very subtle. It's kind of like in the background. I only notice it when I'm really, really looking for it. I think if it was a thinner burger patty, the mustard would read a lot better, but because it's so thick, it's just kind of overshadowed by everything. Gonna have to go meh on it. I think it really just depends on the type of burger that you're making. The hack burger definitely has a nice beefy flavor to it. I think a lot of that came from the combination of meats that we used in the beginning, but there's so much going on on this burger that it kind of gets lost. And I think at the end of the day, Simpler just kind of wins. So I used a lot of hacks to make this burger. Which ones were my favorites? One, wetting my hands to prevent the ground beef from sticking worked really, really well. I was very impressed with that. Two, making the divot for the thumb in the top so that the burgers kept their shapes while they were cooking. And three, adding the toppings to the bottom I definitely think helped the burger stay together better and just made it more structurally stable. Let me know what burger hacks you know of in the comments below. And until next time, take care, my friends.